Apple plans to release iOS 15.1 to the public on Monday, the 26th of October, and this will bring several improvements and bug fixes to iOS devices. While the headline features are ProRes video recording and SharePlay, in this latest update, HomeKit also gets some love bringing conditional automations directly within the home app now yes i hear you homekit users for some time have been able to create these via third-party apps like eve but now users can create conditional automations for homekit right within the native app so starting in ios 15.1 HomeKit users will get the ability to create temperature, humidity, and light level automations. So continue watching this video to find out what conditional automations are, how to create them, and some real life examples I use in my home. Hi, welcome back, and my name's John, and this channel is HomeKit Authority, which is dedicated to everything HomeKit. So what are conditional automations, and why would you want to use them? As already mentioned, the new conditional automations coming in iOS 15.1 are temperature, humidity, and light levels. These are joined by the existing carbon dioxide and air quality level sensors. So for example, you can connect a fan to a HomeKit enabled smart plug and then use the temperature based sensors that if it went past a certain threshold then that fan would turn on. Likewise you could also increase the temperature on your HomeKit enabled thermostats if your house gets too cold. For humidity you can combat dry air in your home by using an automation that turns on a HomeKit humidifier if the humidity levels drop below a certain level. And also the same with light sensors that can utilize the look sensors built into many HomeKit devices to turn on, for instance, a light outside your home when the light levels drop below a certain level. Before we get into the video, if you do have your own that you have either created or you thought about creating or you've been using through the beta, then don't forget to leave it in the comment sections below as it will help other people out especially to find these automations that people may want to use. And if you are new around here and you're first time watching a video from HomeKit Authority, don't forget to check out the rest of the channel. We've got loads of videos like this. We also do reviews on HomeKit products, which will keep you up to date with the latest information. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell button. And also check out our social media channels particularly on Twitter at follow HomeKit, where we're constantly putting out information on HomeKit and the smart home platform. So with that out of the way, let's now look at how to create these and some examples I use in my home. So first of all, starting with temperature-based conditional automations. And let's look at a fan. So why would you want to do this? Well, if the temperature raises in your home, above a certain level, you might want to turn on a fan. You can do this by using a HomeKit enabled smart plug connected to a normal fan. So let's have a look at how to build that automation. So first of all, open the home app and then you click on the plus button and go to add automation. And right at the bottom, you've got when a sensor detects something and then you get access to all the different sensors that you can create an automation with. Now in this case, I'm gonna do a temperature-based automation. I'm gonna select the temperature sensor in my kitchen, which actually is connected to my dining room anyway. I'm gonna click next. And what I want to do is if it rises above 21.5, I'm going to set that there. I'm then going to select the Eve Energy, which actually is connected to a fan in my dining room. And I'm going to click next. And what I want it to do is when the temperature rises above 21.5 in the kitchen, I want the fan to turn on. And I click done. Now you also can do the reverse of this. So once the levels have gone down to say something that's acceptable, maybe around 17, 18, or whatever you choose that you want it to be, you also can do the reverse of that. So do the same automation and you simply set up the, that automation so it turns the fan off once it hits those levels. And now you also can do temperature-based automations using HomeKit enabled thermostats. So again, you open up the OMAP and you click the plus button and you click add automation. And again, you choose when a sensor detects something. And in this case, I'm going to set it up in my bedroom. So what I want to do is use the temperature sensor in the bedroom. And then in this case, I'm not gonna use the one connected to the thermostat. And whilst I've not found much difference between the thermostat on the, um, at the temperature sensor on the thermostat, I still like to use something that's totally independent to that. I then click temperature. And then what I want to do, if it drops below 13 degrees in the bedroom, 
bedroom, I'm then going to select the thermostat in the bedroom. I'm going to set that to around about 18.5. Now this is just my personal preference. It all depends on what you want. I set it to 18.5 because it does take a little bit of time to eat up. And if you set it to something like 14 or 15, it will get to 14 or 15 and then it will turn off and then it will then have to be refired once it drops below. So if you're pushing it to 18.5, at least it gives it a bit of time. I then click done and that automation is created. Uh, so now I've shown you how to create some examples with temperatures. Let's move on to humidity levels. So you open up the OMAP and you click add automation. And again, you'd select a sensor detect something. And I'm going to go to my living room where I've got a humidifier in there. And I'm going to use the humidifier sensor. And I'm just gonna select that for now. Then you click next. And then what you do is you go back to the living room and select the accessory that you want to use. So I'm going to use the humidifier and I want it to turn on. Now, what I do is I turn it on to 100% and then it just fires on. Now, in the same way I've just done with temperature automations, you can also do the reverse of this one. So when the humidity levels get to a certain level, you can stop the humidifier from working. Now, moving on to light levels and using the look sensors within your HomeKit devices. Now, this is one that I've been using for a number of weeks now, and it's to turn on the outside lights on the front of my house for when it gets dark. Now, you can achieve this by using the sunset automation within HomeKit. Uh, what I found, though, is in this case that, especially in the summer months and certain parts of the world, when sunset happens, you may still have quite a lot of light from at least about 45 minutes after. So if the automation is set up to turn on the light when sunset happens, you could have 45 minutes of light that's not needed. And in this world we live in now, where people are energy conscious, then it's not something you want to be doing. And if that's happening every day, then that adds up over the year. So in my case, I'm using the look sensor within the circle view doorbell and using a Philips U bulb, which is installed in a outside light to light up my front door. So again, you open up the OMAP and you go to add automation, click on that, and then when it detects something. So what I want to do is I'm gonna to go to the entrance and use the light sensor and click next. What I want to do when it drops below, now I've found when it drops below about 20% or 10% around that mark, that is where I want the light to come on. Again, go back to the entrance and find the outside light. I want both of these to turn on. And if you want to, you can also set the light levels that you want them to be at, but I turn them all to 100%, so then there's quite a good amount of light out there. So in this case, when the light level drops below 20 lux in my entrance, both of these lights will come on. And this one's really useful. It only comes on when it's dark rather than using the time of day automation. And now you also can use the same automation in reverse. Again, if the light levels go above a certain amount, you can turn that light off. So again, when it's sunrise, I found particularly in the summer months in the UK, it starts to get a lot lighter before sunrise actually takes place. Again, about 45 minutes maybe before. So if you want to save a bit of energy, then you can use it so the looks level, as soon as it starts getting light outside, that light turns off, it'll save you a bit of energy and you're doing your bit for your environment. Now, next up is the carbon dioxide sensors. Carbon dioxide affects you in different ways. You can have an headache, you can feel fatigued, you can lose concentration and just not at your best if you're affected by carbon dioxide. Now I found in my living room, if I've got a few people in there, the carbon dioxide levels will increase. Similarly in my dining room, if I've got people in there and I've got pe uh, people over having dinner, then carbon dioxide levels can increase. So what you can do within HomeKit is use a carbon dioxide detector found in most room sensors that will give you a alert when the carbon dioxide levels go up. Now I found the best thing to do is open a window. I've not actually found any device which can clean carbon dioxide out of your environment. So it's best thing to open the window. Again, I click add automation and I go when a sensor detects something. And now I'm gonna set up in my dining room. However, my kitchen's connected in an open plan format to my dining room. So I'm gonna use the sensor in there and I'm gonna click next. And what I wanted to do is when it detects high levels, and this is only the option you can use, and you click next. But what I'm gonna do in this case is in the dining room, I'm going to activate uh, the lamp on the side and also the floor lamp. I'm going to get them to slightly 
turn to red when carbon dioxide levels have increased. This will then allow me to open up, say, my bifolding doors or a window to allow fresh air in. Now, last one I want to talk about is air quality. Now, using an air quality sensor within a room monitor such as the Eve Room and a IKEA air purifier along with a smart plug, you can create a air purifier which is controlled by HomeKit. So again, you open up the OMAP and you click on add automation and when a sensor detects something and I'm going to use sensor in my kitchen and we use air quality sensor this time. Click next. What I want to do is when it rises above a certain level, so you don't want it to be excellent because that's what it should be. Good is okay. It's when it starts to get to fair that you want to be doing this. Now, again, it's down to personal preference and you can choose what you want. You click next and I'm going to use the dining room e-energy, which has got an IKEA air purifier connected. And I want to turn that on and I click done. Now, this will keep going and stay on until, well, until you turn it off manually. However, you can use the same automation in reverse to turn off the air purifier. So as you remember, when I chose fair, you can choose excellent. And as soon as the air quality levels get to excellent then it will turn off the air purifier so guys that's the end of this video and well hopefully you found it useful and if you have don't forget to give me a thumbs up also don't forget to check out the rest of the channel and also subscribe and hit the bell button if you like what you see and if you've got your own automations don't forget to leave it in the comments below and share it with other people and also check out our social channels at follow home kit thank you very much i'll speak to you soon